Just five games on the main slate for today in Daily Fantasy Baseball, and although there are some decent options, we're definitely scraping along here, trying to identify stacks and pitchers who do stand out and have a combination of floor and ceiling, and there are guys who definitely fit that, but I think it's a volatile slate, and volatile slates can be daunting, it can be a bit scary, but they can also be a good thing because they they give more wiggle room to people who identify upside, identify players who could bust out who don't have high roster rates and i think we can do that for today via being different without being dumb and that's always our goal as always so we're going to dive in to this thursday main slate identify what the the ideal options are but then also identify ways we can pivot from that and try to uh put ourselves in a good spot to take advantage of what should be a pretty wonky slate welcome on into the solo shot that's right here on the FanDuel podcast network and numberfire.com my name is jim sonis i am a senior writer and analyst for number fire here to break down a five game main slate with lock set for 6 40 p.m eastern for today only weather note on the slate is that there is one game with cooler temperatures that is out west in san diego for the brewers and the padres i would downgrade hitters there a bit to account for the temperatures that are cooler there than they are elsewhere we'll dive into the pitching preview and get you set with some stacks in just one second but first a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed the nba daily iso may be done but the solo shot continues here every weekday usc for select events and pga as well get all those by subscribing to the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed and if you like what you hear Leave us a five-star rating as well. And the solo shot does go up over on the FanDuel YouTube page each day also. The NBA playoffs are here, and you can turn crossovers into cash with FanDuel. Just visit FanDuel right now and place a $5 bet, and you'll get an instant $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. There's no better place to bet all the playoff action than on America's number one sports book. Just go to FanDuel.com and sign up and get $150 in bonus bets when you bet your first five bucks. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with the Kansas Star Casino LLC. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Massachusetts. Hope is here. GamblingHelplineMA.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Arizona, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview for this five-game main slate. Nick Lodolo is the highest salary pitcher on FanDuel coming in at $10,800. We got Joe Ryan coming in at 99 against the Yankees. Jordan Montgomery is at 94. Nick Martinez, 81. And Bailey Falter at 8,000, rounding out the top group for today. Lodolo is facing the Phillies for the second straight start. And I hate that because it means the opposing team is familiar with his pitch mix. They've seen him recently. They've studied him recently. That's a downside for sure. I still think we need Lodolo as our top pitcher of the night, though. It is very helpful that although the Phillies saw him, they didn't see him well. He shoved in that game. 12 strikeouts, seven innings, just three hits allowed. And part of the reason that Lodolo is able to get 12 strikeouts is because they let him go basically as long as he wants. In his first two games, he has gone 107 and 110 pitches. He is a cyborg in the most beautiful way. We've also seen the strikeouts there for a pretty long sample now for Lodolo. We're up to 14 starts with fewer forcing fastballs right now, and in that time, a 31% strikeout rate, a 3.17 skill interactive ERA, and the matchup is good from a ceiling perspective as well because the Phillies have a 25% strikeout rate versus lefties on their current active roster since the start of last year. That's why Lodolo was great in that matchup. I have Lodolo projected for 8.5 strikeouts tonight, which is well clear of everybody else. So, yeah, 
it stinks that it's a repeat matchup, but I don't see any great alternatives here. So I think we need Lodolo at the top of our list, despite the fact it is a bummer. This is a repeat matchup to what we saw last week. The good thing is, at least he was great there, and hopefully he can be great once again tonight. Number two for me is going to be Jordan Montgomery. He is a slight edge over Joe Ryan, mostly due to Ryan's situation here facing with the Yankees. Let's we'll talk about Ryan and the appeal of him and things to watch. Montgomery's matchup, not nearly as daunting. He is at home against the Pirates, and the Pirates, I think, may be better than Perception, even with uh, O'Neill Cruz being out now. But they're not a team I truly fear by any means. And it's not the Yankees at Yankee Stadium. Plus, Montgomery is a really good real world pitcher. And he's been that ever since he joined the Cardinals. We're up to a 13 start sample on Montgomery where they let him throw his 14 fastball, gave him confidence in that pitch. And in that time, a 3.43 skill interactive ERA with a 24% strikeout rate. His fly ball rate is 31%. And he pairs those really good peripherals with even better results. His ERA is 2.97. The overall strikeout rate for Montgomery has been fine, but I think it's helpful that he's had good single-game upside within that as well. He had nine strikeouts against the Brewers last time out, and another game with nine strikeouts, uh, and two others with eight in the same sample. So it's a five-game slate, pretty limited options. That's more than enough for us to feel good about him for tonight. Montgomery's strikeout projection is 5.97 for me. It's not nearly Lodolos. Uh, it's way behind that, but it's still fine enough. And above the others, other than Lodolo and Joe Ryan. So I'll put Montgomery second. Uh, I feel firm putting Lodolo first. And we'll talk about Joe Ryan as a potential contrarian option, a way to be different without being dumb in things to watch. As far as the value goes, I want to be out on Chris Bassett. I was kind of hoping they'd stick him at 9,000 for tonight and I could just ignore him. Um, in any other setup, I would be out here because his velocity is rough, bad results so far, but he's facing the Tigers. I'm willing to give him a look here just due to the salary matchup and slate size. The salary for Bassett is $7,300, which is way down from his usual. The matchup, as we know, is elite versus Detroit. 77 WRC plus to them against righties with a 125 ISO and a 26% strikeout rate. The Tigers check every box you want from an imposing matchup perspective. We've seen two starts with Bassett uh, with his velocity being down. And in those two starts, nine and one third innings, he has exactly the same number of walks, strikeouts, and home runs. Five, five, five across the board. Not ideal. So again, if he were facing any other team, I'd be out, be happy about that. But those two matchups in Bassett's defense were on the road against the Cardinals and the Angels, two very tough offenses. Now he's at home. Maybe he gets some of that velocity back. If he does, he has upside. So I am fine considering that as a possibility. But the key caveat here is if Bassett tracks to be popular based on the matchup and the salary, bridge too far for me. I cannot handle a guy with really bad velocity, really bad peripherals, really bad results if he's going to be the chalk. But if his popularity is more neutral, like average, he's a fine value play. I'm at least willing to consider. I think I'd prefer all three of Lodolo, Ryan, and Montgomery over Bassett, but Bassett is the best value play for tonight. I'd like to avoid it, so hopefully he tracks to be popular. I can just pivot and feel good about it, but, you know, all else equal, he is the best value play for tonight. So Chris Bassett, the top value, but a huge preference for me for Lodolo, followed by Montgomery, and then by Joe Ryan. And Again, we'll talk about Ryan's appeal later on today. First, so let's dig into the stacks and go back to that Montgomery game facing off with the Pirates. And I think that the Cardinals offense is a pretty easy call as the top stack for today. They're facing Vince Velasquez. And not only are the Cardinals one of the best offenses on this slate, but this may be the best matchup as well. Velasquez has been trying to figure things out for years now and been plenty of iterations where he did make gains. We've seen it you know, have some some good stretches, but he hasn't found the magic sauce yet, especially not this year. In two starts so far, Velasquez has expected ERA at 6.23. He has more walks and strikeouts. The batted ball numbers are better than they were last year, but they're not good enough to overcome the rest of the profile. And, you know, the, ba the batted ball numbers, despite being better, are still nowhere near elite. So this decision to me, is easier than making Lodolo as a top pitcher, making the Cardinals a top stack. 
They have a great offense, 118 WRC plus against righties. They have a good matchup against a guy who is likely to let up uh, fly balls and hard contact. And I think that makes them the top team on the slate by a wide margin. So going back to the Cardinals once again as a top stack for tonight. And that's not going to be contrarian by any means. People will be on the Cardinals. But as always, you're not going to see all nine batters in this lineup wind up being super, super popular in terms of roster rate. So one way to be different without being dumb is by dipping down in the order and using guys who bat six, seven, eight, somewhere around there. And on this specific team on the Cardinals, you can do that without sacrificing upside because Nolan Gorman has huge power. Tyler O'Neill better against lefties for sure, but does steal some bases. He has some power against righties. Jordan Walker has looked comfortable so far in his transition from double A to the majors, and he has stolen base upside as well. So, Again, our goal in DFS is to be different without being dumb. I think you can do that within Cardinal stacks tonight, despite the fact they as a team will be popular by pivoting down to six, seven, eight, looking at Gorman, O'Neill, Walker, all those guys, very fun options. And I think that if you're trying to, again, differentiate yourself without going suboptimal ways, I think that's the way I'd choose to do so for tonight. Behind the Cardinals for stacking, I'm going to put the Blue Jays second. I would not blame you if you view them similar to, similar to the Cardinals. I, I think you could view that that way. But the key difference for me is ground ball rate. The Jays are facing Spencer Turnbull, who was a big ground ball guy before he got Tommy John surgery. He has made two starts since coming back, and the ground balls are still there. He has a 55% ground ball rate, which does hurt opposing upside for sure. But everything else about Turnbull has been rough so far. He has a 6.7% swinging strike rate. His expected ERA is 8.21. One game is against the Rays. Very tough matchup there. Other was against the Red Sox. And the Blue Jays actually do have a higher WRC plus against righties than Boston does. And now Turnbull's doing this on the road. So I do not like stacking against ground ball pitchers. I think that that is rough in general for sure. And Turnbull was showing some flashes before he had his surgery of being a viable guy for daily fantasy. I would love to see him get back to that because it's tough to see guys go through Tommy John and, and not get back to what they were doing before the injury. But in this spot, I think it's wise to sack against him. And I will do so uh, with the Jays. I think they're a full tier behind the Cardinals, but if you want to put them in the same tier, I think that's totally defensible as well. As discussed here, plenty on the show, primarily last year, I am a huge Dalton Varsho guy. And I might be becoming more of one right now. His hard hit rate this year is up to 44%. It was 35% last year. And that's pushed his expected WOBA up to 347 from 298 last year. And that's just the hitting. The speed is there too. So we haven't seen Varsho go nuts so far this year. But I think that going nuts is well within his range of outcomes. And he doesn't need to go nuts to get upside via his speed. He can get some singles, walks, stuff like that. So I'm a big Dalton Varsho guy. Going to keep on doing that right now. Uh, I think that his salary is pretty forgiving down at $3,200. So Dalton Varsho, a focal point for me within these J stacks that I try to target since they're turning ball for tonight. I do think the Padres are in play for stacks. I just don't know who they're facing yet. So they might well be third but I can't really talk about their matchup because I don't know what it is. The Brewers pushed all their starters back, so I'm not really sure what to do there. I do think the Padres, or the Brewers, though, are in play in this same game facing Nick Martinez. Again, caveat here is that it's cooler in San Diego than it is elsewhere on the slate. We do downgrade bats. Despite that, I do still like Milwaukee. Martinez, it's his third start this year. The first two have been pretty rough with a lot of walks, not enough strikeouts. He's a pretty good bat at ball data, but guys are connecting on some of his pitches. He's making mistakes. The baseline is a high ground ball rate, but he is making some mistakes. Uh, Martinez has let up a 13.9% barrel rate, up from 8.1% last year. All that leads, the walks, lack of strikeouts, hard contact leads to a 7.46 expected ERA for Martinez. Those games were against the Rockies and the Braves. One of those is very tough in the Braves. Other one? Not very tough in the Rockies. That game was in San Diego. The Brewers, pretty good offense. 109 WRC plus against righties with a 178 ISO. They're not the worst offense, but also definitely not an easy spot by any means. So I think they're fine. I wish that Martinez didn't get as many ground balls, 
but they will work on a short slate. So the Brewers, to me, for now, the number three stack, depending on what the Brewers decided to do a pitcher, because I could push the Padres above them. Martinez last year did let up more fly balls to lefties and righties. The Brewers this year, pretty lefty heavy, so that's a good thing here in this matchup. Uh, we love the power from Rowdy Telez, but I kind of like Garrett Mitchell quite a bit. Mitchell has some power, got a bit of speed. He had 24 steals last year across double-A, triple-A in the majors. He's had a good start so far this year with plenty of hard contact, still some strikeouts, but that's going to be the case for Mitchell always. And But Martinez doesn't get a whole lot of strikeouts. Martin or Mitchell likely to bat six. He's $3,200, so not cheap. But I want guys with multiple paths to upside, and Mitchell definitively does, ha does have that. So the Brewers right now, my number three team for stacking. Let's dig into things to watch, talk about some more ways to potentially be a bit different. That could be via Joe Ryan. I think he's a fun contrarian option. He's facing the Yankees here in pretty good hitting weather, very tough matchup. So that makes Ryan a massive risk here tonight. But in the two starts with a new pitch, the splitter in play for Joe Ryan, he has a 35% strikeout rate. So he has a good upside. He just doesn't have a good floor. And I'm okay with that trade-off personally uh, because I don't mind risk. I want the upside for DFS. Ryan has that. So if you want to get off of Lodolo in a repeat matchup or avoid Montgomery, who may not have the biggest strikeout upside, I think Ryan's a fine way to do so. So Joe Ryan, a good pivot for I think specifically single entry tournaments for tonight. I have no idea who the Brewers are starting. As mentioned, uh, they pushed uh, Eric Lauer back a day. It's one spot you'll have to check back on later. So just make a mental note uh, later on today before you fill out lineups, go check out NLB.com. Check out the scores page. See who the Brewers are starting. The Padres could be a great stack. I just don't really know who they're facing yet. So check back on that one later. Finally, the Reds are facing Bailey Falter. Who's had a good start to this year, but We'll let up fly balls. We'll let up hard contact. That makes the Reds an option. There just aren't a ton of guys you want to use against a lefty here. So they work, but they're not super, super desirable. Spencer Steer could be okay as a one-off if you want uh, to fill third base. $3,000 has some ceiling. Uh, Platoon advantage here as well. So I think you could go that way if you wanted to, or if there are other Reds you like against lefties. Let's finish up with the dinger calls for today. A boring one and a fun one. For the boring one, I got to go back to Dalton Varsho again. I like the batted ball data early on this year. I think that that's adding up well. Facing Turnbull, who may let up more fly balls to lefties and righties. So Varsho in a good spot to take advantage. We'll go Dalton Varsho for the boring one. For the fun one, let's go back to the Cardinals. Let's go Nolan Gorman. Obviously, he has massive power. So it's not a, you know, off the wall kind of recommendation for our fun one. But I like it a lot. Homers in consecutive games already has four so far this year. $3,300 on FanDuel. Good dinger upside, so we'll go with him. I know it's not the most fun pick, but I think he's got a good shot to go deep for today. So the home run calls for today are Dalton Varsho and Nolan Gorman. That's all we got for today here on the solo shot. Again, interesting slate. Uh, try to think about ways to be different without being dumb, whether it be using different guys than the Cardinal stacks, uh, maybe using Joe Ryan. Think about those things as you're formulating your day and uh, try to get them in a good spot to be different without being dumb. We are back once again tomorrow to break down Friday's main slate. So make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. Search for us there, hit subscribe. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five star rating. And again, check out the solo shot over on YouTube if you want to watch a video version of it as well. If you have any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down a packed Friday slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.